Okay, um, good morning everyone. Uh, my name is Victor Richet and let me start by what might sound as a quite unusual question. Uh, is there any radiologist among the audience today? Well, I kind of guess not. Uh, the key point is there is a famous quote from 2017 that states that radiologists will not be replaced uh, by AI, but I can see that there is no radiologist uh, among here, probably mostly nuclear engineers, nuclear administrators, nuclear uh, technicians, and so on and so forth. So the key question uh, remains, are we safe? Will we be replaced uh, by AI? Uh, of course, that initial quote by which I started as two parts and I will give the last part in the end of that talk today uh, for those who have not chat gpt the quote already. But first of all, let's focus on the second part of that question. Are we going to get replaced uh, by AI? Well, I will answer to that question in five different parts. First, we will focus a little bit on what the future holds for us, what the future holds for the nuclear industry as a whole. We will see how AI can be the solution, or more accurately, a part of the solution, especially as regards the challenges uh, raised by uh, the learning from experience, which is a key feature expected from our industry as a whole. Um, how it can integrate into a wider part of the solution. And let's finish by something a little bit down to earth and a little bit more close to the use case. But first of all, what does the future hold? What's next? Well, it's no surprise to any of you, or at least I guess so, that we are living interesting times and that the stars are aligned for nuclear industry as almost never in the last, let's say, five to eight uh, decades. Energy is required, clean energy is a must. Lots of what we have been living with in terms of nuclear, nuclear power plant, nuclear research, nuclear facility, etc., etc. Most of that is to be decommissioning and dismantled in the coming years, if not the coming decades. And people, the most important of all, people all around have seen their awareness and knowledge about energy and clean energy raise. Um, there is a strong movement in favor of clean energy and in favor of nuclear in Europe, in Americas, in Asia, etc., etc. So all traffic lights are more or less greens. But the key question is, what does it mean? Well, it means that we will have to initiate new project, we'll have to make running project go faster, we'll have to achieve what's expected from us by the general opinion, by the public opinion, in terms of traceability, in terms of transparency, in terms of excellency, etc., etc., as well as integrating what is existing, because nuclear industry is not the new kid on the block. It's something that has been around for decades, and return of experience is there. And last but not least, I would fail to my mission if I do not underline that this must be done without any kind of compromise as regards nuclear sa safety, which is first and foremost topic. So in a nutshell, new projects, new expectations, new requirements. What does that mean? It means, in very simple terms, more work for every one of us. But not only for every one of us, because more work means as well more workforce. We expect new engineers, new technicians, new administrators to be required in numbers of tens of thousands or hundreds of thousands all around the years in the coming years. Those newcomers will have to be identified, they will have to be attracted, and they will have to be retained in that industry and in that sectors. Uh, let's focus on a few specific examples. Let's take the example of France, which I do know uh, quite well. New nuclear is a thing, new programs have been launched. There is a huge landscape of different startups which have started to explore new nuclear technology, molten salt, lead cooled fast reactors, sodium cooled fast reactors. There is, of course, dismantling, which is very strongly ongoing. And, of course, well, 
we kind of have 58 nuclear reactors running and they have to be kept running so that we can keep running events such as those ones. So the needs in France will be very high. Let's focus on another situation which is the one of India. In very simple terms, India will swallow energy. The need for energy is amazing. Many units are already under construction, much more are planned. I do know very well the situation in India as I'm based in New Delhi and I can tell you from facts that this need is there and it will not vanish, it will still be there. So all of that leads us to this need to integrate, to have, to identify, to hire new people inside the industry. But does the journey stop here? We hired someone, that someone is there, we are happy? Most certainly not, because we are in a technical industry, we are in a complex industry, we are in a legacy industry, meaning that the journey does not stop when someone enters the industry. It starts when that someone enters the industry. Because, of course, to enter the industry in every country of the world, there is a large amount of jargon, of acronyms, of expressions, of concepts that you need to master. Once you have mastered that, of course, you are expected to be a part or a key part of a project. That project comes with a legacy. I can only talk about the project I've been working in, most uh, famously the EPR2 program. That program has started more than a decade ago. It will keep running for decades, most probably. So all of that data is to be integrated by any newcomer. Last but not least, those projects are not only long, they are immensely complex with many stakeholders from many entities. So not only I have to integrate the legacy of the project, I have also to understand and to integrate where is my team, what part does my team or my entity or my organization play in the project, and that is additional jargon, additional knowledge, additional data, etc., etc. So the journey from entering the industry to be a part of the project raise the need to integrate huge amount of data. But you'll tell me very simply that has been going for years. Nu complex project in nuclear is not a new thing. Projects have been complex in nuclear for decades. Projects have been long in nuclear for decades. So why do we need to change things now? Isn't thing working? Let me take one very simple example. If you, for example, as a newcomer, and that is a situation I have lived as a system engineer on a project, you raise some query, you need some uh, knowledge. Well, of course, the journey is quite complex. There are answers raised by different experts which direct you to different documents, sometimes contradictory, sometimes obsolete, uh, sometimes you don't know where to look, and long story short, in the end, what happened when I raise a query? Well, that's very simple and most probably most of you can expect that. That is quite a mess or at least a strongly inefficient process. What do we believe? We believe that artificial intelligence has lots of capability to process very large amount of information and data, to treat natural language queries, to identify and cluster elements inside a large information repository to sort it and to do it as exhaustively and as accurately as possible. Those are key features that we expect to help people enter the industry. Now, how do we expect that? Well, of course, I mentioned natural language. We expect those elements to be very straightforward and easy to use. We, accept that we expect them also to extend the reach of someone that enters the industry. That that person is not limited to the one, two, three, four, five documents that have been brought to him when he enters the organization. We expect as well that no information is missed because I have not had access to that document, because that document was not printed, because I read only the first chapter and this was written in the third chapter. So accuracy is also one key way to leverage value out of that. And last but not least, 
Well, everyone has used Google, everyone has used research. In the end, getting to the core of the result from the result of the research can be a tricky thing. So our belief is also that artificial intelligence will help us to display the result in a much more easy to integrate way. But I am not saying that this will change everything. So the key question that arise now is very straightforward and simple as well. What do we do with AI? And I have talked a lot, so let's do a little bit less talking and a little bit more showing. Oops. What you see on the screen is a model that has been developed based on a system knowledge, based on a system expertise. Uh, let me start by apologizing because the video is in French. Uh, we have worked mostly on French documents due to our context, but this has been uh, fine-tuned and trained from a system's expert's knowledge. And what you see on the screen is very simple. We have developed based on the document of a specific parameters that we have worked with with our client EDF, a Q&A generative AI model that from a query which has been directly entered by newcomer in the industry, provide directly in natural language the answer. Those elements have been extracted in a purely secure and isolated way, no network connection, no use of um, black box AI, no query sent and answer received. This has been done in a safe and secure way with all due guarantees of data confidentiality and non-external access. This has been based as well on documentation that has been produced on the project without any pre or post processing, just raw repository of documents such as the, the ones that any organization can find in the depth of the network, the SharePoint, or whatsoever is used by the current organization. One key point to be underlined is that not only we have used existing repository, but we know that most of our knowledge is also in the head of our expert. So at the same time as uh, mapping the knowledge repository, we have performed a large campaign of interview with all of our experts to try as much as possible to move from implicit knowledge to explicit knowledge. Let me just uh, zoom in on that specific question. What was written is uh, what are the heat sink of a nuclear power plant, or maybe on that one, which is related to safety. The question, you will tell me it's very elementary, it's what are the three safety barriers? And the answer to that question, uh, of course, I mean, as most of us know, uh, free barriers are um, fuel cladding, uh, primary circuit, and nuclear reactor building. That has been directly generated by the model from the experts' interview that have been fed in into the model. We believe that this element has the potential to, um, let's say, evolve, improve the way we onboard people on a project. Actually, to be even more accurate, we believe that this element, basically, when you, it can have the same impact as switching a trip from Paris to Bruxelles by foot to a trip from Paris to Bruxelles by car. It means that I remain the one holding the wheel, the one driving the car, the one defining the destination, but all the tedious tasks, all the low added value tasks will be automated. Now, does that mean that everything will be changed? Does that mean that everything will be new? Well, what that means is very simple. There are a large spectrum of queries, a large 
expectations from newcomers. Many, many various, diverse and different expectations. Does that mean that we now have the answer to everything? Of course, no. We are not in, excuse me, we are not in Harry Potter world. We do not have any magic wand to make all questions vanished. And we have performed some element of studies about the queries which are raised in a nuclear project. Some of them are simple. Some of them uh, require accuracy, traceability, etc., etc. Some of them require some not only knowledge, but also opinion from an expert. Some of them require to go deeper into the query because they do not require an answer, they require training. Do we believe that those queries will be treated the same way? The answer is, of course, not. As I was mentioning, just like there is a spectrum of light, there is a spectrum of answers to those queries. And our belief is that artificial intelligence has the potential to solve a part of those queries, to bring answer to part of those queries, but a large part will also remain to the expert area, to the document area, to the training area. And our main goal is not to change everything, but to bring another brick into the wall to enable to leverage productivity and efficiency in the onboarding process. I have been actually as of now, quite theoretical. So what to expect? Well, let's bring ourselves in the skin of a few personas. As a newcomer in the industry, I have been a newcomer in the industry. Most of us were. What happened today is that newcomer in the industry needs to acquire that knowledge. That person spends lots of time asking questions to the teammate, to the people that can be reached on Teams, on WhatsApp, on whatsoever is used. What happens is that there is frustration on the side of the person which is constantly requesting knowledge, and there is as well a lot of time from the expert which is not wasted but not used at full potential. The idea is clearly to achieve shorter onboarding time by automatizing those queries. But I've talked a lot about newcomers. Let's talk a bit about people which are not newcomers. I am a senior person in the nuclear industry. I am an experienced person. I am whomsoever the person wants me to be. That does not mean that I will not happen to be on a project with lots of legacy data, lots of complexity, lots of element to be integrated. I was mentioning earlier dismantling project. Well, in dismantling project, basically, you are dealing with all decisions that were made during design time, commissioning time, construction time, and operation time of a facility. Can I know that? Do I have the time to browse into gigabytes of data to know what has happened in this particular hot cell, in this particular experience room? Of course not. Neither do I have time neither do the project manager will give me the time to just spend two months reading. So we believe also that this kind of model will help me to get the good knowledge, get the good understanding, get the key feature of the installation I am working with. What does it mean as well? Shorter onboarding time for every engineer on one given project that involves lots of legacy data. Last but not least, of course, we are not only dealing at project level, at engineer level. We are dealing at organizational level, a team, a project, a wide project, an organization, an entity, an engineering centers. Of course, in that case, I am dealing with lots of projects that may be running at the same time, that may be closing, that may be opening, etc., etc. And what does that shorter onboarding time will mean, that, mean me, that will mean greater flexibility for me as business unit manager, engineering manager, to shift resources from project to project along my needs and to be sure that after a shorter time, my engineers will have enough knowledge about the facility 
to enter that. And that means as well that whensoever a project is closing, I will have to put much less efforts to bring much more results in terms of project capitalization. Instead of writing down lots of documents that will never be read, I can just store safely in a location all documentations that have been produced during project lifetime and be sure that this is access, accessible and available for everyone. Now we are reaching uh, the end of that talk and as promised, I will give you the end of the quote. The quote was that AI will not replace radiologists, but radiologists that do know how to use AI will definitely replace the ones that do not. And our belief in a system is that the same holds true for nuclear industry and the engineers, technicians, administrators and entities in general that do know how to capitalize on AI and how to value AI will definitely achieve greater productivity and replace those organizations that do not take that turn. That was just one very straightforward and obvious use case for artificial intelligence in knowledge sharing. Do not uh, doubt that there will be much more arising in the coming months and coming year. And our belief is that this is not only an efficient turn for our industry, this is as well a mandatory turning point for our industry. Thank you for your attention.